Hello students, welcome back to another session of math class. In our last session, we have studied about some concepts of congruency of triangle. In our previous class, we were discussing about exercise 7.3. Now, we will go through the remaining part of the exercise. So, students, let us discuss question number 2. What it says? AD is an altitude of an isosceles triangle ABC in which AB is equal to AC. Show that AD bisects BC and AD bisects angle A. Okay. So, let us discuss the solution. Okay. So, students, as per the given data, I have constructed a diagram. So, as per the data, let us consider triangle ABD and ACD. Okay. In triangle ABD and triangle ACD, what we have? We have AB is equal to AC. It is given. Fine. AD is equal to AD. It is common. It is a common side. What else? Angle ADB is equal to angle ADC. Because it is 90 degree. Because AD is the altitude. It is the altitude. That means what we have now? We have two sides and a right angle. Now we can say that it implies triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ACD by RHS rule. Isn't it? We have two sides and a right angle and we know that RHS says if two sides and a right angle is there then we can go for the RHS congruency. So, as triangle ABD and triangle ACD are congruent that means BD is equal to CD. So, which is the first bit BD is equal to CD. Okay. Why? CPCT. Again that means it implies AD bisects B C proved. The second bit angle B A D is equal to angle C A D. Angle B A D is equal to angle C A D again C P C T. That implies A D bisects angle A. Angle A. In this way, we have proved both bit 1 and bit 2 of question number 2. Hope you have understood it. Students, let us now discuss the remaining part of exercise 7.3. Question number 3. It says two sides AB and BC and median AM of one triangle ABC are respectively equal to sides PQ and QR and median PN of triangle PQR. You can see the figure given in your book. I have also drawn the same figure in the whiteboard. So, now we have to show that triangle ABM is congruent to triangle PQN and triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR. So, let us go through the solution. Students, M and N are midpoints of BC and QR respectively because AM and PN are median, isn't it? So, now first, what we have to prove? We have to prove triangle ABM is congruent to triangle PQN and we know that M is the midpoint of BC. So, as M is the midpoint of BC, we can write that BM is equal to half BC and QN is equal to half QR, 
isn't it? Because M and N are midpoints respectively. Fine. Now, what else? We have BC is equal to QR is equal to QR it is given. Fine. And half BC is equal to half QR that means BM is equal to QN that implies half BC is equal to half QR. So, we have found out half BC is equal to BM that implies BM is equal to QN because half QR is your QN is not it. Now, let us mark this as equation 2 fine and, and now we are going to prove the congruency part ok. In triangle ABM and triangle PQN, triangle ABM and triangle PQN, we have AB is equal to PQ, it is given, ok, AB is equal to PQ, it is given, again AM is equal to PN, it is also given. Fine. So, we have now two datas which are for the congruency purpose, but we need another data. What else? That is BM is equal to QN as we have proved it. Is not it? So, we have now three datas for the congruency purpose so that triangle ABM is congruent to triangle PQN by SSS rule of congruency. Fine. So, triangle ABM is congruent to triangle PQN. So, we have solved the first bit. Now, let us go for the second bit. Okay. Students, from the previous result, we have found that angle ABM is equal to angle PQN. Okay. Angle ABM is equal to angle PQN. That implies angle ABC is equal to angle PQR. Is not it? Because angle ABM is equal to angle PQN that implies angle ABC is equal to angle PQR. Now, let us consider triangle ABC and PQR. Okay. Here AB is equal to PQ, it is given. Fine. BC is equal to QR. And angle ABC is equal to angle PQN already proved. Fine. So, we have now three datas and let us find whether they suffice the congruency rule. So, we have two sides AB and BC which are equal to PQ and QR respectively and the angle included angle that is angle ABC is equal to angle PQR that means they satisfy the rule of congruency side angle and side. So, that is why triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR by SAS rule of congruency. So, students in this way we have proved that triangle ABM is congruent to triangle PQN and triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR. Hope you have understood this. Students, let us now discuss question number 5. It says 
ABC is an isosceles triangle with AB is equal to AC. Draw AP perpendicular to BC so that angle B is equal to angle C. So let me draw the diagram first then we will discuss the solution. Okay, Students, I have drawn the diagram as it is given in your book. You can refer your book or you can see over here. Consider triangle APB and triangle APC. In triangle APB and triangle PC. What we have? We have AB is equal to AC. It is given. Fine. Now AP is equal to PA. It is common. Okay, and angle APB is equal to angle APC. Angle APB is equal to angle APC because they are 90 degree each. Fine. So that's why triangle APB is congruent to triangle APC by RHS rule of congruency ok as these two triangles are congruent that implies angle B is equal to angle C CPCT fine so now we have completed exercise 7.3 let us now discuss some more concepts about the triangles Okay, students, now we will discuss about inequalities in a triangle. So far, we have been mainly studying the equality of sides and angles of a triangle or triangles. Sometimes we do come across unequal objects. We need to compare them. For example, as given in your book, line segment AB is greater in length as compared to line segment CD and angle A is greater than angle B. Let us now examine whether there is any relation between unequal sides and unequal angles of a triangle. For this you need to perform the activity that is given in your book. So let me draw the diagram and we will discuss through the diagram and you can do this activity at your home okay students for this activity you need to fix two pins on a drawing board say at b and c and tie a thread to mark a side bc of a triangle this is a representation through a diagram in the same way you have to fix two pins at point b and c and tie a thread such as it will create a line segment say BC. Fix one end of another thread at C and tie a pencil at the other free end. Mark a point A with the pencil and draw triangle ABC as it is shown in your diagram. Now shift the pencil and mark another point A dash. Now you need to shift the pencil from A to A dash and mark it as A dash okay on C A C A so you need to maintain the direction of C A on that line C A you need to shift the pencil up to point A dash okay now you can observe that a dash C, A dash C is greater than AC, isn't it? A dash C is greater than AC. It is quite obvious. Join A dash and B to complete the triangle A dash B C. What can we say about angle A dash B C and angle A B C dash? Compare them. What do you observe? Clearly, Angle A dash BC is greater than 
एंगल ए बी सी इज इंड इट सो यू कैन कंटिन्यू टू मार्क मोर पॉइंट ऑन सी ए एक्सटेंडेड वी कैन एक्सटेंड दिस लाइन अप टू इंफिनिटी एंड वी कैन हैव मल्टीपल पॉइंट ऑन दैट पर्टिकुलर लाइन एंड वेन वी कनेक्ट दो पॉइंट टू बी वी विल हैव मल्टीपल ट्राइंगल्स एज वेल एज वी हैव ट्राइंगल ए डैश बी सी सो वी कैन गो अप टू ए डबल डैश and we have a triangle a double dash bc then also we find that a dash c is greater than ac and angle a dash bc is greater than angle abc so from this we can find a pattern isn't it whenever the length of the line increases the angle at point b also increases See, initially it was AC angle ABC. When it goes to A dash and C, as A dash C is greater than AC, angle A dash BC is greater than angle ABC. In the same way, when we have extended it up to A double dash, as A double dash C is greater than AC, angle A double dash BC is greater than angle ABC, and so on. We can go up to infinity. Okay. so students we have observed that as the length of the side ac increased by taking different points of a the angle opposite to it this is ac angle opposite to ac is b so when we have increased the length of ac towards a angle b is also increased so let us now consider another activity okay in this activity you need to construct a scalene triangle that is a triangle in which all sides are of different lengths and measure the lengths of the sides you can construct any kind of scalene just you need to concentrate that the length of each side is different from each other one of the diagram is given in your book you need not to follow that particular diagram you can draw a scalene triangle by yourself now just measure the angles what do you observe in your triangle you will find that the angle that is opposite to the largest side of the triangle will be of larger value or will be of largest value that means if side bc is the largest side of your triangle and if angle a is opposite to angle bc then angle a will be the greatest angle of that particular triangle same way if ac is the smallest side of your triangle then the angle b if it is opposite to side ac then will be the smallest angle of your triangle so in that way we arrive at a very important result of inequalities in a triangle it is stated in the form of a theorem let us discuss that that is your theorem 7.6 if two sides of a triangle are unequal the angle opposite to the longer side is larger or greater i repeat if two sides of a triangle are unequal the angle opposite to the longer side is larger or greater we may also prove this theorem by taking a point p on bc such that ca is equal to cp and it is given in your figure 7.43 you need to draw this triangle abc and by taking a point p on bc such that ca is equal to cp we can perform another activity to prove the theorem okay so students let us perform another activity draw a line segment ab with a as center and some radius draw an arc and mark different points say p q r s t on it okay so let me draw the diagram first then we will discuss this activity okay so students i have drawn the diagram as it is given in your book for the activity you can also draw the same and perform the activity okay so draw a line segment ab with a as center and some radius 
सो आई हैव टेकन द रेडियस आज ए पी फाइन आई हैव टेकन द रेडियस आज ए पी एंड आई हैव ड्रॉन एन आर्क एंड आई हैव सम पॉइंट पी क्यू आर एस टी ओके दे आर सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम इच अदर एंड दे लाई ऑन द सेम आर्क सो आई हैव ज्वाइन दीज पॉइंट विथ पॉइंट ए लेट एस नाउ ज्वाइन द पॉइंट विथ पॉइंट बी आई हैव ज्वाइन पॉइंट पी विथ बी लेट एस नाउ कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम क्यू students you need to do the same with your geometrical instruments on your notebook so that you can understand this better okay now see we have triangle apb aqb arb asb and atb with us fine now what we observe that when we go from p towards t okay when we go from p towards t the length of ap increases gradually ap is smaller than aq is smaller than ar is smaller than as and is smaller than at isn't it so length of the side opposite to it which side the and the side that is opposite to angle a the side that is opposite to angle a keeps on increasing side opposite to angle a is pb with the increase of side ap which is opposite to angle b the side opposite to angle a is also being increased pb is smaller than qb is smaller than rb is smaller than sb is smaller than tb isn't it so now draw any triangle with all angles unequal to each other measure the length of the sides the side opposite to angle a keeps on increasing with the increase in angle with the increase in angle so you can draw any triangle with all angles unequal to each other measure the length of the sides observe that the side opposite to the largest angle is the longest as given in your book in figure 7.45 angle b is the largest angle and ac is the longest side you can repeat this activity for some more triangles and you will see that the converse of theorem 7.6 is also true in this way we arrive at the following theorem that is theorem 7.7 in any triangle the side opposite to the larger or greater angle is longer this theorem can be proved by the method of contradiction now take a triangle abc and in it find ab plus bc bc plus ac and ac plus ab what do you observe you will observe that ab plus bc is greater than ac bc plus ac is greater than ab and ac plus ab is greater than bc you can repeat this activity with other triangles and with this you can arrive at the following theorem that is theorem 7.8 the sum of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the third side i repeat the sum of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the third side as it is given in figure 7.46 observe that the side ba of triangle abc has been produced to a point d such that ad is equal to ac can you show that angle bcd is greater than angle bdc and ba plus ac is greater than bc have you arrived at the proof of the above theorem let us now take some examples based on these results okay so we will discuss example 9 students let us discuss example 9 it says d is a point on side bc of triangle abc such that ad is equal to ac 
the figure is given in your book and I will also draw the figure and we will discuss the solution and the question demands to show that AB is greater than AD. So, let me draw the diagram first then we will discuss the solution part ok. Students I have drawn the figure as it is given in your book in triangle DAC AD is equal to AC ok. It is given fine then angle ADC is equal to angle ACD that implies angle ADC is equal to angle ACD why because they are angles opposite to equal sides. Now angle ADC is an exterior angle for triangle ABD angle ADC it is exterior exterior angle to triangle ABD ok. So, angle ADC is greater than angle ABD that implies angle ADC is greater than angle ABD or we can say angle ACD is greater than angle ABD or angle ACD is greater than angle ABD or also we can say angle ACB is greater than angle ABC angle ACD is greater than angle ABC because ABD is nothing but ABC. So, we can say angle ACD is greater than angle ABC that implies AB is greater than AC AB is greater than AC why because sides opposite to larger angle in triangle ABC AB is the side opposite to larger angle in triangle ABC or I can say AB is greater than AD why AD is equal to AC because AD is equal to AC fine. Now, as per the requirement we have come to the conclusion of the solution. Hope you have understood this example. So, students in our next class we will discuss some more concepts about the triangles ok. Till then keep smiling, take care, thank you.